Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're gonna be selling something on Distashify. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I set up my little shop, um, how I put up that first fabric. We're gonna look at the site together. It's actually very easy. It's very user friendly. <laughs> now I haven't sold it yet. Um, obviously I just put it up this morning. Um, but if you guys are interested to see then what I kind of walked through like the instructions of what to do once you sold something. But if you want to see that in person, I could probably tag that on to one of my Distashify videos later on. Um, you know, when I'm showing you my makes and my, um, fabrics that I've grabbed maybe at the end of the month, if that's, if the fabric sells, <laughs> if that's something that you want, um, to see, let me know. I can definitely do kind of a little update as well at the end of one of those videos. Um, but yeah, I'm walking through today how to do that. Now, a couple of things that I have found as a shopper that are important to have when you're shopping to Stashify. Um, oh wait, before we get into that, it's Friday. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Today is Friday, Love Notions Feature Friday, and it is such a good one. It is the Sybil Illusion Skirt. This one, it, it's a fantastic pattern. There's a little um, option for like a tummy control panel in the front of these with some power mesh. It's so great. I think seven different versions. It's a knit skirt. I have made a few. I'll pop up some so you can see um, the ones that I have made. But the best, I think, part of this pattern, if you already own the Tessa sheath dress, you can pop the bodice of the Tessas onto the skirts of the Sybils. So it's just a matter of omitting the waistline or the waistband on the Sybil and you just sew it to, there's a line on the Tessa where you can cut and then sew your Sybils to that line. So it just opens up a whole world of possibilities <laughs> for dresses. Um, so yeah, all seven of those Sybil skirts can be attached to the bodice of the Tessa, or the bodices of the Tessa. The Tessa has like three bodice options, I think. Um, anyway, it is a really great knit skirt pattern and, um, yeah, I highly, highly recommend. So, uh, anyway, popping that up, uh, pictures of me. And uh, again, you can use Tomcat 10 to get an additional 10% off, um, that pattern as well. And yeah, go have a, go have a look. It's a really, it's a really great deal for seven skirt patterns, basically, because they're all very different. Um, anyway, go have a look at that. Okay. So that's my plug for Feature Friday. But before we get into this, to Stashify, okay, um, I also want to let you all know, so Carrie, who runs to Stashify, has set up that, uh, the website and all that kind of stuff, has made at the top a, a, a drop-down menu for Fall 22, I think it says Fall Capsule 22, and she has curated, because she also um, subscribes to the Everyday Style um, Capsule Wardrobes, and she has cura cur curated based on the color palette that went out with that, um, those capsules, uh, all the yarns and fabric that um, kind of go in that color story in that drop down. So if you also have purchased the Fall Capsule 22 and want to go have a look at what the fabrics they've got or yarn if you're a knitter um, or a crocheter, what they've got um, on the site that are in those colors, she's gone ahead and curated all of that so where it matches the colors that are in the Fall 22 capsule. So that's just a really cool thing. I went over there and looked and may have bought some yarn. I want to knit myself another sweater vest at some point and I may have bought some yarn for that. So. <laughs> I just went to go have a look at it to see what she had, you know, what she had set up and then ended up making a purchase. So that happens. Okay. So as a s buyer on Distashify, cause this is my first time selling. I think the biggest things for me when I am looking at fabrics is number one, well lit pictures. I prefer the pictures that are like just filled of the fabric. So whether it's the print, um, obviously if it's a large scale print, you know, pulled back enough that you can see most of the large scale print. Although there is an option to do, I think up to five photos on a posting where you can like swipe through. So if you want to do a close up and then one a little further back, I prefer those. Um, also well lit photos. So that doesn't have, you know, you don't have to have studio lights like I have. Um, just well lit. So a lot of lights on or a little bit of natural light. And then what I have found, um, and I think Carrie from Distashify was the one that suggested this. You can get these pixel perfect color calibration charts on, um, see, look at that, on uh, Amazon. They're like $15 and you get two of them. They're the same thing though, so I'm not sure. I guess so you can have them in two different spots. 
Anyway, um, this will help your white balance adjust and make sure that you're getting as true a representation of the color as possible. Um, so I lay this on my fabric when I'm taking my picture and I use just my phone for this one. Um, and I think it works really well. So, um, and then I just crop it out. So when it's laying on the, the fabric kind of in one of the corners, I take the picture and then um, I just crop this out so it's not in the picture. Although I don't know that it would hurt if it were in the picture. Um, anyway, just to get the best color representation as possible. I also really like when the um, width of the fabric is listed in the description. Um, I like when the weight and if it has stretch, if that is listed in the, so in the description as well. Um, I also like when there's a description of the color. So sometimes it's really hard to tell, number one, if something is white or it's... Um, cream. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's navy or black. Um, when things pop up on Distashify, it's, she does a really good job of like, you know, telling you what you could make it with, um, you know, what would be suitable to, to use and also colors. So I tried to be conscious of that as well when I did this one. I just think it's a little easier to shop that way. So that's just kind of a tip from a buyer's point of view that I have noticed really, really helps. Also, if this all seems daunting, but you have a lot of fabric that you want to get out of your stash, but you don't want to donate it to just the regular charities, just because you don't know where those are going to end up, because if they don't sell, then they just go to landfills, I guess. Um, third world countries, that kind of stuff, which is awful. Um, anyway, if you want to donate it where people are going to love the things that you donated, you can reach out to Destashify. There's a spot if you want to donate, and she sends you um, the shipping, and then you just put it all in a box and ship it off to her. Because I have a few, I have a box that I'm going to be shipping off to her as well. So the things, I mean, I don't have unlimited time to be able to post things. So my nicer cuts, I'm going to be selling on Destashify. And the ones that are just, um, you know, I just don't want to mess with. Um, you know, I wouldn't be able to get as much for them, which is fine. Um, I'm just going to put them in a box and ship all that off to Destashify so she can put it up on the site and sell it for, you know, the thrift store prices. So um, there is that option as well, and I think that's a great option, so don't forget about that. Okay, so real quick, um, I'm going to flash over to the computer and show you how I set up my store. Great. So here we are on Destashify's website. Um, while I do have an account for buying things on Destashify, I don't have one for selling. So here we've got the Destash, this is just the home page here on Destashify. Destashify your craft room and declutter your life. You can sign up now or how to start selling. I'm gonna click on this how to start selling. We're doing this together. Um, and she's got great instructions here for how to do this. So sign up as a seller. We're gonna click up the sign up now button to create an account. Um, then we can access the account from the person icon, which is up here um, in the top right corner. Um, and then click the seller portal button to access the seller tools. Okay, then we have to verify our email. So let's go back. Actually, I'm going to leave this open just for reference. And we're going to open up another Destashify browser here. Okay, sign up now. All right, um, so I'm just going to sign up here where the uh, create the account. Obviously, I'm not going to, well, I wonder if this is, hold on. Okay, sorry, I skipped over that just to hide my own um, things. And um, anyway, I am here in my account. Um, you can see what I've bought here. <laughs> and I hopefully have blurred out my address. I forget to do that all the time. Okay, so you do not have to create a new account if you already have a buying account. But if you don't have a buying account, you're gonna have to create one. All right, so I'm just gonna go over here to Seller Portal. Seller Portal. Okay, here is my dashboard. Well, this is just very exciting. Um, and here are all of my options, invoice configuration, all that kind of stuff, but we're not gonna get ahead of ourselves yet. So the first thing it tells me, if you go back here to how to start selling, um, we've clicked on the account tab. Um, okay, yeah, we click on the account tab, then my account, and I can save the following information. I can put my seller name, shop name, address, phone number, description, profile image, logo, and payment. So I can do all of this on that seller, oops, seller profile, which is right here. So, I'm just looking over here. Okay, so my account. 
So we're going to go over here to my account because I want to set all of this up. Okay, so here we've got um, all of the account details. Obviously, I'm not going to, I'm going to pop off this real quick <laughs> so that I'm not, you're not seeing my own um, like um, information and you know, like my Venmo and all that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop off, but I think we can just upload our image here, upload a logo. So if you have a picture of yourself or some sort of logo, then you can um, go ahead and, and upload all of that there. So I'm gonna pop off of this page real quick, set this up, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I have set up my profile and now I've gone back over here to my little list that they've got and um, I have, you know, like I can set up my profile. I haven't put pictures or anything on there. Honestly, I can't see on the site where you could even see that for a shop, so I'm not gonna really worry about that. Um, okay, so now we're going to, it says to click on the products tab, then click on all products, then click add, add product. So now I can, you know, do the product name, type, description, tags, shipping information it says check requires shipping for physical products which obviously this fabric's a physical product price it says to include a little extra for shipping i know that they do flat shipping of like uh five dollars i think for um for um in the united states and then maybe it's 10 for international shipping something like that anyway um sometimes though if you're not using flat rate shipping for um, ups or USPS, United States Postal Service. You may wanna add just a little bit of extra for shipping, just to include that into your price. Then the quantity, and then, so how big it is, and then, well, quantity would just be one, because I'm just selling one piece of fabric here. And then it tells me the photo size, um, which we may have to edit our photo, and I'll show you how to do that. Then it says, by default, the item, in, item will be visible on the website as soon as you click save. And if you wanna hide it, you can do these things. But um, I'm not, I'm gonna, I want it to be out there, so. We're gonna go back over here to the account. Okay, so I have blurred that out because when I went back to account, it showed all my personal information. <laughs> so <laughs> cut that out. But all I did was get over here to products and to all products. Obviously, I don't have any products yet. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click add product. Yay. Okay, we're gonna choose the type of product. I guess just it just stays at normal product. What does that mean? Choose product. This is a physical non-digital product. Okay, so that's what we want. Product name. I'm gonna call this um, pink and green embroidered linen because that's what it is. Product type. This is apparel fabric. Description. Um, okay, so this is a medium weight embroidered floral linen um, with a white background. I think that's important so that you can really see. Sometimes pictures can show up weird on your computer. Um, like I have a hard time seeing between black and navy. It's helpful if that's put on the description. Um, in pink and green, oh, and sorry, my English teacher mother is popping into my head. <laughs> and a pink and green embroidered floral motif. Um, fabric is 54 inches wide and is suitable for jackets, pants, skirts, I would say in home decor, and some home decor. Maybe I won't put that there, because it really is apparel fabric. Okay. Um, product tags, oh, let's view our product tags. Maybe I can just pick my own. <laughs> that looks confusing. Okay, product tags. I'm just going to say linen. 
Yes. Okay, so linen, embroidered. Oh, no. Nope, that one doesn't want to be there. Okay, um, white, pink, and green, which are the major colors. Um, bottom weight? Nope. Nope, doesn't want those. Okay, we'll just do linen, white, pink, and green. Okay, pricing details. I'm wondering... Oof, I've had this in my stash for a really long time. Um, oh, you know what I'm going to do as well? Here in the product name, I'm going to put how much there is. So two and three fourth yards of. Okay. That way people know how long it is. Um, I'm going to sell this for $30. Um, I have no idea what I purchased this at. I'm going to guess that it was at least 20 bucks. You got probably 25 because it's an embroidered linen. So, um, and we've got just the one. Okay, and then this doesn't come in different sizes or colors. Okay, now I can upload my image. And I've got one right here on my desktop somewhere. Um, there it is. There's the fabric. Okay. So now I think I just need to hit save changes. Woohoo! Okay, so my product has been successfully added. So if I go to this products, all products, there it is. Yay. Okay, and I have um, a lot of these, a lot of, I mean, a sizable amount, probably 20 cuts. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to be out of town, so I don't want to add too much because I want to be able to ship these off as quickly as possible. And I can definitely do a, a separate video if you guys want to see it on how what I need to, what you need to do when it's time. But Destashify does have over here. We'll go back over to this tab. Um, if you go have an order that needs to be fulfilled, it tells you what to do. So it says we recommend using Pirate Ship to create the label which I probably will do because I like to go with what's recommended. <laughs> um, so I'll wait and do this obviously when this sells to create a USPS shipping label. Um, that includes rates for cubic shipping, which can be less expensive than flat rate or regional mailboxes. Um, let's see, it requires all domestic shipments to be sent via one to three day shipping service. So that would be like priority shipping with USPS with a tracking number and insurance for orders over 10 which again, priority would include insurance. Um, and then we decline the service because it says some services allow you to email a shipment notification, but it says to decline it because Destashify will do that. And then once it's sold, you're gonna go into your Destashify account. Okay, so we'll go on to the Destashify account. Let's go back over here. And then we would go on orders, I guess. Obviously I don't have any yet. So it's gonna say nothing, but it's in this tab here. Um, find the order to fulfill, and then you're gonna click the three dot button in the action column and then select view. So it really walks you through this. Then click the button, and then you can fulfill fulfill that order. Uh, then you then it asks you to enter the tracking number and the shipping method. And then once you've done that, so you stick it in your little mailer, put the address and stuff for the person that's buying it. Um, then you select by fulfill items and then it says a shipment notification with the tracking information will automatically be sent to the buyer. And I think once that happens, then we get paid. So it says next, tell us how to pay you. So they'll pay you through PayPal or Venmo, which are, I believe PayPal and Venmo are owned by the same company. I just um, selected a PayPal um, address. 
Um, so yeah, then you just click on the account tab. Oh, it shows you how to upload your PayPal address. But it says, yeah, you'll receive payment after the order's tracking number is entered into the seller porter portal. So once you've entered that, when you've sold it, and then all that, they will send money right to your PayPal account, which is really cool, or Venmo if you prefer that. So there you go. Okay, so now if we go to fabric and apparel fabric, like if we were shopping, I didn't put garment types in my tags, did I? Okay, maybe I should have done that too. See, this is a learning experience. That is a beautiful wool right there. What is that? Oh, it's a gingham cotton woven. See, I'm getting distracted now. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's see. I guess we could look by color. I'm gonna just close out of this and then fabric, apparel fabric, um, color, there we go. We'll go with pink. And I'm wondering, although it didn't say that it would need to be approved by Distashify before it can go up maybe. Sorry, am I making anyone sick by scrolling? Oh, there I am. Okay, there it is. There is my pink and green embroidered linen. It's very beautiful and it's embroidered, so this is all raised. I was going to make um, a jacket, I think, out of it, or a dress. It could be, oh, I should have put dress on there. It would have been perfect for a dress as well. But these pinks and greens are just not in my color palette. It's a white background, and so I am letting it have a new life. My daughter didn't want it. That is in her color palette, but she um, didn't want it. So there we have it. Okay, so we're good. And I'm sure if I just went into fabric and apparel fabric, um, if I scrolled through all five, you know, eventually I'd find mine. <laughs> I'd find mine. <laughs> but there you go. It's so easy to put that up there. So now I will just sit and wait. Um, and I didn't, I put, if you're interested in that fabric, I put it under... Uh, my name, which is Whitney Luckinville, not under Tomcat Stitchery, because keeping these two things separated, um, the business from my personal. And I'm also going to put my daughter in charge of curating my Distashify account as we slowly go through these. So there we have it. Let me know again if you have any questions. Okay, so there you have it. Um, it was very, very easy. So now I have my yardage here that I'm sitting on. It really is gorgeous, guys. I mean, look at this, and it's embroidered. Oh, oh I also, um, something I wanted to mention, I, this is a larger scale print. I put the um, uh, dimensions of the motif in my description as well, because I think I did, did I? Hmm, I wrote it down, now I can't remember if I put it in there. You guys will be able to talk. I may have to go back and edit that, um, but the motifs are four inches by five inches, so um, I think that's important too when you have a larger scale print, so. Now what I'm gonna do is I have a whole bunch of these plastic bags that I have saved. Every time um, I get a wall whack order, they come in these, um, you know, if I buy a whole bunch of thread or something, they come in these large Ziploc bags inside the box. And um, and when I've ordered some things off to Stashify, the fabric has come in these. I just think it's nice because it's gonna protect the fabric a little bit better. And this is pretty thick fabric because of the embroidery. So I'm just gonna now place this into a Ziploc. And again, I didn't buy the Ziplocs. These are literally just left over from um, other orders that I've got. And I can't seal it, but I feel like this is just in the envelope. It's gonna keep it a little bit safer. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'm fooling myself. This just feels safer. So I'm just gonna set this aside now, and when this fabric sale, sells, I will um, ship it off to the um, buyer, and then I will put the tracking number into the form like I talked you through, and then the money will pop up into my PayPal account, which is very exciting and uh, very easy. So that is the plan. Okay. I hope you guys will give it a try. I want more people to sell stuff on there because as a fabric hoarder myself with a little bit of a fabric addiction problem, um, I just think, I don't know, I don't feel as guilty buying off 
to stashify because I feel like I'm saving the fabric from um, sitting in a stash somewhere uh, and then hopefully I will use it up. Now the things I pulled from my own stash are colors that just don't work for me. A lot of grays, um, some pinks. My daughter went through because that is in her color palette and just kind of said no she doesn't think that that's something she would want, um, but I have some beautiful stuff in there, uh, especially some wools that'll be going up that she just doesn't have as much interest in. So anyway, keep an eye on the shop. At some point, I will be adding more on there. <laughs> I have everything cold now, but just as a little public service announcement, when you're going through your stashes to kind of look through things, see if there's anything you wanna call, I highly actually recommend doing this frequently because you remember in last Friday's video when I told you that I was wanting some plaid fabric for a shacket and I didn't have anything in my stash um, so I might have to buy something but I was trying not to. Well lo and behold <laughs> as I was going through to cull things for to stashify I found this beautiful window pane check um, that is a cotton viscose from Joann's and um, actually this was in the backdrop of my behind my cutting board that I've used for some videos I filmed for other um, people like Love Notions and stuff. Um, so this would make a wonderful shacket material, I think. And then I have no idea. I mean, I'm sure I bought it at some point, but this was stuffed in a bin where it shouldn't have been. But this is a plaid flannel. It's my warm red and it's my like dark blue. It's not even navy. It's like my dark blue. It goes perfectly with my fall wardrobe. I have no idea how much of this I have. This would make a little heavier shacket. This would make a little bit drapier one, but who knows? Maybe I'll make myself a button up shirt and a shacket out of these two. <laughs> but look, I already had the fabric. It was right there in my stash. So this is going into the pile of things to make for the fall. I have a lot of this actually. I don't remember where I bought this. I, and I, I think it kind of feels like the mammoth plaid, the, um, oh, who makes that? Is that Robert Kaufman, the mammoth plaid? I may have bought this off of Craftsy actually when they still sold fabric because I had some mammoth plaid in a blue and black, um, like a, a buffalo check that I had made PJ pants out of for my husband and then my son made himself up, I mean like years and years ago. I may have bought this at that same time. I don't remember. But, and even the like white that's in there is cream. So <laughs> look at that. When we shop, like really shop our stashes, it's amazing what we find. And these two things were not in their places where they should have been. This was with bottom weight fabric. I don't know why it got shoved down there. Um, like with some of my wools. Um, and this was on a shelf. So that's why I missed them. When I went into my drawers to look in my, you know, I showed you guys how I organized my fabric. Those were not in there and that's how I missed that. So. There's just a little PSA to have things organized so that you don't go out and buy more. Look at this, money saving right here. I've already got those in my stash. So I need to spend zero money on fabric for this fall, which is crazy and amazing all at the same time. <laughs> okay, that's all I have for today. Let me know down below if you have any questions. I'll answer those as soon as possible. Um, I will be back Sunday with the Magna Pants. That's the last pattern hacking from the Head of the Curve book that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, and I have made them wide leg and I have also shown you how to hack it for pockets. And I love my pair that I made. It's good. So I uh, can't wait to share that with you on Sunday. Okay guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. I hope you get some sewing in this weekend and I will see you guys again on Sunday. Bye.